3D printer, in this case a CR10, hooked up to a Raspberry Pi running Octoprint and a tablet running Doodle 3D. Could this setup be enough to help children with limited mobility get into 3D printing? We're going to find out. I was contacted recently by a family who wanted their children to be able to get into 3D printing. The catch was that their children had limited mobility. They were in wheelchairs and only got around with the help of some assistive technology. So how could I make it possible for them to get into 3D printing? I could have just suggested a 3D printer, but I felt like it needed more because 3D printing is more than just having a 3D printer. It's also either making or getting the 3D models, processing those models for the 3D printer, and then running the dang 3D printer. However, I was recently introduced to Doodle 3D, and Doodle 3D, I discovered, run, runs just as well on a tablet as it does on the computer. That combined with Octoprint would give me a full tool chain for getting prints from a tablet to the 3D printer with minimal effort, assuming a little bit of setup time. Now I've got that all set up, so let's see if we can make it work now. So here's Doodle 3D up and running, and we're just gonna go down a little bit and create a new Doodle. Now, the goal for this project is to make a chess set, but uh, just to make it a little bit more of a challenge, I wanna make it a triangular chess set. Because I don't see a whole lot of those. Uh, you know what? I want to make it a perfect triangular chess set. So let's undo that. And instead, let's use this N-Gon tool. And we'll just do it like that. There we go. I like that better. Let's fill that in with whatever color. And then let's come on over to the 3D view. Extend it up. And the rest of this is all going to be done in the 3D view. So I'm going to go ahead, zoom in a little bit here, and move it over. There we go. Now let's see. I want to kind of make a shape like this. Uh, I'm going to put two divots here and then grab a divot in the middle. Nope, not that one. Huh. I'm going to have to zoom in again. divot in the middle and then pinch it just a little bit just to give it a little bit of shape grab it here bring it in two divots on either side of that and then pop it back out how tall did I make this did I make this too tall uh, five centimeters yeah that's a little bit too tall we want to bring that down And then we're going to just round off the top of this to finish it off. There we go. And there we go. A perfectly serviceable triangular chess set pawn. I like that well enough. That's good. All right. So now what I got to do is save this one as triangle pawn and then export the file as an STL. Now even on the tablet you have to go through this step of saving it as an STL on the tablet or smart device then going into Octoprint. However Octoprint is going to look pretty much like this. This is the mobile version of Octoprint if you have Touch UI installed. And also I like to install the full slicer plugin to Octoprint. I feel that that makes it so much more usable and important for this whole process. It's possible without it, but never mind. Let's go and upload a new file and navigate to where that file was downloaded, which in my case was downloads, and I just need to find the triangle pawn. It uploads it and it pulls up the slicing profile. Now you can navigate this with your touch finger, you can take a look at it, resize it, scale it, do everything that you need to. We're gonna go with it. We could duplicate it and print a whole bunch of them if we wanted. I just want one for now. 
and let's come down make sure everything's good I've got it set up for my CR10 I've got it loaded with ASA this is gonna be my example print for ASA um, let's see make sure that the settings are the way that I want them temperatures good layer height do I want to do point one yeah that'll make it look good uh, maybe I'll take that up to point one five yeah there we go top bottom print speed I want the shells to be a little bit thicker I want that to be uh, 1.2 yeah I want to have three shells on there now let's slice it up uh, how's the slicing going buddy all right fantastic slice it again no oh, I didn't need to do that and then let's go back to the main there's the G code Let's start the print and let's go to our settings to monitor it. Did we start the print? Good, but oh, there's my graph coming up. So it's saying that it's warming it up and I can come over here and take a look at my printer going on my tablet and watch it going. You guys are getting a great shot <laughs> of my shed where everything's running. But there we go. All of that done through the tablet uh, easy to use, easy to go for. Now, full disclosure, what you just saw was not done on the tablet, but it is possible to do this all on the tablet. I've tested it already, I've done it, and I printed this bishop from the same triangular set. For the family that asked for my help, I gave them actually the Duplicator 6, but the setup besides that is the same. It's still got a Raspberry Pi running Octoprint on it, and you can see here the kids are super excited to get into it. In fact, we're printing right now in those pictures something that they had already designed in Doodle 3D, which is super exciting. They're getting their own first 3D print. Now, of course, for these kids, as soon as it was done, they checked it out and immediately wanted to do something else. And they were giving these prints away to their neighbors. They're treating this like it's no big deal. And, you know, to them, it's not. They're going to grow up in a world where it has never not been possible to have a machine in your garage that you just hit go on and you get an unlimited supply of Christmas if you just wait a little while. How cool is that? This is the reality that we're building for them and it's finally possible. Now I wouldn't say that this tool chain is ready for prime time. Setting up Octoprint takes a lot of time and I think you need to have a parent who's at least a little bit technically savvy in order to make this work, but I really appreciated the opportunity to work with them. Also, I, I wouldn't use a printer like a Creality or even an ANA A8. I would want a printer that was a little bit more together and easier to repair. That's why I gave them the Duplicator 6, because the Duplicator 6 was super easy to do repairs on. It requires a lot less hands-on experience in my experience so far with it. It still isn't perfect, and, and I don't think the perfect printer is there, not for any reasonable price, but it's super cool seeing what they were able to do with it and I can't wait to see what they come up with for this. As always, I want to thank you guys very much for watching and I want to thank this family for giving me this challenge and, and helping me to be a part of this. It was such an exciting project to be a part of. I want to send a thanks out to my Patreon backers and let you know there's always room for more. I want to thank you guys very much for watching and remember, safety first. I'll see you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The beginner's guide to the 3D printing galaxy is here now for you. Buy it on Amazon.